So, as we near the end of our Minimoke Four Synchro Magic Wand transmission rebuild, uh, it's time to put the differential in, and I thought I would try to show how I like to set up the preload with the side shims. This seems to be kind of an area of mystery to a lot of people. It's like, well, how do you know? How do you measure it? How do you tell with all this mess exactly when you're trying to measure thousandths of an inch? It's pretty simple, and it depends a lot on the choice of gaskets as well as uh, multiple styles of bearings used over the years. So let me try working on my little jig here. We'll just work our way down, and we'll show quickly that we've rebuilt our gearbox. You can see we've assembled the uh, speedometer end, uh, the motor mount block. And we are really to the point now where with our final drive in place, we can pretty well put the differential in. So the diff unit's right here. I'm going to be running the 344 ratio. Um, the moat came with a 376, and so with the bigger engine, we can relax a little bit, and we should have a nicer uh, cruise RPM. So I want to get right to this over here. Basically, I'll put it in as far over to this side to the side away from where the shims are going to go. And that's important on these, it's always important, you know, keep it on this side because for the rod changes there's linkage over here, other things. Um, it's just a way of doing it consistently. The, the amount of movement here really doesn't make a difference. I've had people ask me, well should you center it? Mm, not really, it's, it's riding on this wide gear. It's in an area where a few thousands one way or the other is not going to make a difference. So what we can see when this is in place here, and I'll try to position this if I can make it visible, is I've put it all the way over here to where I know I'm going to have a pretty good gap here when I put the side plate on. This is a loose fit right now. I can put a fingernail in there and I've got the plate and the gasket and that's all we're going to put on this side. So with this thing laid in place I can just take this, put it here, and literally I can just hold the whole thing and push on it And if we can see if I've got the camera still, see that whole unit just slid over just from pushing in on this. Now I've taken the gap out of here, I've made sure that this side thrust style bearing is fully seated, and I've pushed it over here to about where I want it. Let's come over to this side a little bit see if we can show. So now we know that our shims are going to go here. This side already has its gasket over here. What I do is I'll start with way too much shim. Here's 40 thousandths, 20, 10, 10. Lay those on the bearing. And then without a gasket, you can see that all of that is held in place, like so. And there's a considerable gap here because I used far too much shim knowing that I wanted to measure this. So our gasket's 15 thousandths in this style of gasket kit. And that'll just slide right in. So we know we've got room for the gasket and still too much shim because this is just an easy fit. So I've measured this with a feeler gauge and right now I think I've got something about on the order of about 35 or 36 thousandths in here. And so if you do the math, here's 15, that leaves about 20. So if we remove the two tens out of our shim pack here, let me make sure which ones the tens are. Those are the thin ones. Let's make really sure. There's the 20. We've taken out the 10. Now, if I put this in, there should still be a little gap here. And look at that. In fact, there is. Our gasket is about 16 now, compressed to about you know 14, 15. So we can go over here and say, there's 16, can we fit that? And ah, that's a pretty nice fit. So this is the way I calculated this one out, is 16 thousandths for a gasket, about a 15, 16 thousandths gap here, so that when we put the gasket in place, Now we're pretty confident that if we tighten up all these bolts, we're not going to have this thing heavily loaded by the side shims, yet we're also not going to have it flopping around. You don't want these bearings to be able to move around side to side because 
that'll start creating clearance and wearing on the housing. And I've seen these when they're not put together right, where this outer race has spun in the bore, and you're pretty much done there as far as the case being useful if that happens. So this is a pretty important step. There's not a lot of mystery to it. If you just pay attention to what you're doing, it makes sense that gasket style, these two add up to about 30. Many kits, individual gaskets are about six per side. So that's 12, a lot, a lot of different math there. You can see where if you had the thinner gaskets, you'd need an additional, say, 18 thousandths of shim for all this to work out equal. Eventually, the factory did away with gaskets going to silicone. Again, the shimming arrangement changed. Far fewer shims are required when you don't have the gaskets. But this is the way they were set up back then. This is the way I like to do them. We can make these not leak. And in our case, we're modifying with this... Um, magic wand front cover original to the moke and so it's critical that our case lines up because these two pieces did not start out as a match set and we're going to make them fit nicely all right we'll continue with our build here and get back with some more details